A very good morning and namaste. Thank you for a very kind introduction. I'm already flying in space. Uh, Mr. Charles Baldwin, Administrator NASA, uh, Mr. Michael Lates, USAID Senior Deputy Administrator, Dr. Andrea Seal, Director General of ECMOD, distinguished dignitaries from regional space agencies, all regional space agencies from the Hindu Himalayan region, distinguished delegates, and participants. It is an indeed a great honor and privilege to be making this presentation among this August gathering. My presentation today is focused on the, very much on a conference theme, role of Earth observation in terms of dealing challenges of the climate change in the hindu Himalayan region, namely bridging the data gap. I just would like to introduce saying that uh, International Center for Integrated Mountain Development, a unique and possibly the only center in the world devoted to sustainable mountain development. And information and knowledge of this mountain system is a core or heart of the center as such. And art observation, we are putting increasing emphasis on the art observation in terms of understanding the various intricacies of this mountain system, so to speak, so that we can improve upon the lives of people living in the mountains as well as people living in the downstream. This is a beautiful view, again, the role of art observation, seeing a one snapshot of the Hindu Himalayan region, so to speak, with a northwest view. And in the context of a climate change, this region has gotten heightened awareness, not only at the international level, but also at the regional and national level, and even the local level. The fact that the youth that we have in this forum and your awareness of the challenges faced by climate change is testimony to the heightened awareness of the climate change in the Hindu Himalayan region. That's a very good sign in terms of dealing with the climate change. But if you look at the drivers, different drivers of this climate change, population dynamics, not only increasing population, but the whole question of a migration dynamics in mountain also plays a very, very crucial role. Second drivers, globalization, industrialization, that has happened, we have witnessed all around the world. Natural resources, mountain communities, whether they like it or not, they are dependent upon the subsistence, agriculture, limited land they have on the mountains, or the natural resources surrounding them. Over-exploitation of natural resources for sustenance of their life. Land use change, we all know, Mr. Bolton had described, it's a blue oasis from the space. But we humans have greatly changed the land use pattern. Urbanization, yesterday we are seeing the satellite picture of the picture in the night. The great deal of a change in land use in a recent history over the past of the industrialization or more so over the last 40 or 50 years dramatically increased the frame conditions all around the world. But more from the mountain perspective it has created very high pressure, demand upon the mountain system, mountain ecosystem the ecosystem that provides sustenance to life of not only mountain communities, but many people living downstream. And the name, the climate change, I think, poses us enormous challenges. 
not only from the environmental perspective, but also from the perspective that climate change is intricately linked with social, ecological, and environmental dimension poses enormous challenges and putting a very heavy toll on the different resources. Water, I'll come back to this topic, biodiversity, agriculture, forest, even the cultural heritage, the whole Himalayan region is endowed, in, endowed with a very rich culture and the indigenous knowledge, so to speak. So from Isimo's perspective, as a small institutions, what can we do about it? Within the strategic frame that we have divided, though mountain communities are not directly responsible to the greenhouse gas emission at the global level, they are facing the very much brunt of the climate change impact or effects of climate change, so to speak. Whether we like it or not, they will face the unavoidable effects of the climate change to these communities and their life will be affected, affected. But at the same time, we need to adapt to these new circumstances. We need to understand. I believe our understanding of all these drivers and the climate change is still very early stage. We need to have a more scientific investigation, more kind of research. So increasing adaptive capacity and resilient mountain communities is our motto. And art observation plays a very, very important role. And that's the theme of the conference, so to speak. In this August gathering, with all the distinguished delegates from the regional member countries, as well as all the international partners, we are brainstorming in a way that, as to how we can deal with these mega challenges. Now again, from the mountain ecosystem perspective, this is the essential services for life support, water, biodiversity, and many different components, water, cryosphere, land use, deforestation, air, atmosphere. These all elements are not in isolation. These are very, very interdependent and interlinked and complex to understand. And as a matter of fact, due to very complex interactions and interdependencies of this thing and the new frame condition of a climate change that has posed immense challenges to development, immense challenges to sustainable development, so to speak. So our context in terms of using earth observation is in the context of mountain development and climate change. And how do we really unfold the issues of these intricate linkages between the various components? We cannot obviously deal with these issues in isolation. These issues are very much interlinked and linked with the people, those who live there, and the surrounding environment. And the knowledge about how this system works is a fundament in terms of enhancing our understanding in terms of guiding our policy programs and namely as to how we adapt to climate change. In my own belief, we are very early stage in terms of our knowledge in the context that how to adapt and what to adapt. We are struggling in this battle all national governments, regional governments, global communities are continue to struggle in this pursuit. And I'm very happy that here's a gamut of scientists, scientific communities, policy makers, decision makers, is under one roof here in terms of dealing and talking about these different issues. Now, Hindu Kusimalan reason, again from the space, beautiful. As Dr. Bolden had, uh, Mr. Bolden had uh, pointed out some spikes that you see from the space vantage point, probably these are the biggest spikes that you see from space. And many of the international reports, 
many of the climatic assessment at the global level, regional 